Have you ever wondered why your brain is important? Everything about you is housed in your brain. How you move your body, what you think, what you feel. Your brain is foundational to your health. It's like the engine in the car that moves everything about you. And yet we don't even know how your brain works because we are just starting to peek under the hood. And because of this, we don't know what to do when things go awry with your brain and your mental health. Right now, we're fighting for the future of our children's mental health. The US Surgeon General has declared a youth mental health crisis, and this has just gotten worse with the pandemic. We have a huge barrier to addressing this crisis, though, and that is when parents bring their children to the doctor's office, a psychologist, psychiatrist, and say, hey, my child is really having a hard time. They're tantruming a lot, depressed, anxious. The doctor will say, okay, try this treatment. And if that doesn't work, try this, try this, try this, until something finally works for that child. But this approach is really inefficient and costly and grinds down families every time a treatment doesn't work. And it's not that doctors are trying to be obtuse, it's just that they can't yet look inside the child's brain to figure out what is wrong and what child needs what treatment. I'm the director of the Translational Emotion Neuroscience and Development Lab housed at San Diego State University. And I'm on the vanguard of a scientific movement to address the youth mental health crisis by leveraging brain imaging. You might be familiar with a traditional MRI where they take a static image of your brain. That's like looking under the car hood while the car is off. Okay, there's the carburetor, here's the battery, here are the spark plugs. But because the car is not on, we can't really see how these parts are working together to make the car move. We, on the other hand, use a special form of brain imaging, functional MRI, to look under the hood in a way that is completely beyond a static image. When kids come into our lab, they line the MRI and play video games that tap psychological processes, like how they feel when they win or lose money, what it's like when their people are angry or happy with them, how they feel when they're frustrated, in functional MRI, these images are dynamic. You get to see the brain activation as it's happening in response to these emotional events. That's like looking under the hood of the car when the car's running, even when it's moving down the road. So you can really see how these parts work together to make the car move and figure out what is the part that's making that clunking noise that is the problem. We use brain imaging to look under the hood in two ways. First, we want to answer, what are the brain signatures that predict which children will benefit from what established treatments? And second, can we discover in advance the brain signatures that will help us predict which kids are just experiencing passing emotional problems that will get better on their own? versus kids who are on a trajectory toward entrenched mental health problems that will last through adolescence and into adulthood. Once we know these brain mechanisms, we can target them for novel, innovative, preventive interventions and new personalized treatments. As an example, let me tell you about a study that we did here in San Diego, partnering with local schools. One of the things about working with disadvantaged communities is that trauma is virtually universal. So many children, especially with our position on the border, have experienced a loss of a parent because of death, incarceration, deportation, or maybe they've witnessed violence or experienced violence or abuse. All of this is trauma. And we know that trauma is one of the most potent pathways toward mental health problems. So, of course, we have to treat trauma, and the best, one of the best established treatments is trauma-focused cognitive behavioral therapy, or TFCBT. In TFCBT, kids talk with a therapist about their experiences and learn ways to calm themselves and cope. And on average, it works. 
But for about one third of kids, they don't get better. So we had to figure out what was different in the brains of kids who did versus did not get better after treatment. And what we found is that the kids who did not get better had something in common. The way their brains reacted to getting a reward and being denied a reward. We already know that the reward system is affected in depression. You might know people who are depressed and are like, ugh, nothing feels pleasurable anymore. I used to like going out, having fun, but it's just not enjoyable anymore. And the kids who did not get better after treatment, their brains reacted totally inappropriately to the rewards. Sometimes greater activation, sometimes less, but in the opposite direction to the kids who did get better after treatment. This suggests that some fundamental problem with how these kids' brains are valuing and reacting to rewards might be preventing them from healing from, from their trauma. So, what do we do with this information? The answer is nothing yet. We're just starting to look under the hood to figure out how the brain works. The brain is the true final frontier. And right now, we're doing bigger and better studies to replicate and expand our findings. For example, we're collecting brain data on preschool-aged children to figure out if we can identify the neural signatures of mental health risk earlier. But this is the type of early foundational work that I'm so grateful and lucky to be a part of. We imagine a future where instead of trying and trying and trying things until something works, a doctor might order a lab test, which is based on an MRI of the child's brain. And from the results of that lab test, they could pre prescribe a personalized treatment for that child. Finally, think about this. When scientists were studying electricity centuries ago, they could have never imagined that we would have the cell phones and computers and technology that we have today. Similarly, I will probably not live to see the full impact of my work, but my team and I are building a road toward a better mental health future for our children. Thank you. <laughs>